Hi, I'm Jim Lake. A viewer made a suggestion recently concerning one of my videos from last year showing what I believe to be cloaked spaceships in the airspace above my house in Tacoma. He suggested that I try stacking the frames of the video to see if the stacked frames might reveal additional information about that cloaked object. Further, it might reveal that the object is visible, but simply too poorly lit uh, to be seen at night. This struck me as a really good idea, and one that I hadn't thought of, but I thought it was well worth the effort. And for the benefit of those that might not be familiar with stacking, it's a process used by astronomers involving registering a whole long series of individual video frames taken from a fixed position and then adding the information in each frame. Each frame might have collected only a few photons in the 1 15th of a second that it was exposed, but if we add the photons from many photons of the same spot taken at different times, normally invisible objects might become visible. Now, it has to be noted that if the photons are in non-visible regions of the spectrum, for example the infrared, we still won't be able to see them with the naked eye although this night vision camera that I'm using should image that. I decided to give this whole thing a try and see what it revealed. Okay, so if you want to make your own stacked image from your night sky video, you'll have to extract individual frames from the video. Now this is really not particularly difficult to do and there are a lot of different ways to do it. Uh, the way that I have chosen to do it is with a program called VLC Media Player, which is the software that you see in front of you. The first thing you have to do, I'm going to go ahead and kill the program here. First thing you're going to do is call up VLC Media Player and open your file. And in this case, the file is the original video file from the camera. And that's the one we're working with. We'll open that up. And then go over here to Tools and down to Preferences. This is not intuitively obvious, and um, it's a little on the tricky side to figure this out. But nevertheless, this is how it's done. Down here in the lower left-hand corner, click on All, and then come down to the bottom and... Go to filters and then come down here under these filters and click on the one that says scene filter. And at this point you can get to choose the file parameters, the image format, the image width. These little dash ones just say use the defaults. Uh, your, pre your file name and then your directory path goes right in here if you want to do multiple copies into the same file, you can check this box. And then you say save. And then here's another tricky part about this. You gotta go back to it, say all, and then come up here like this, and make sure that when you just go to the Filters tab that the Scene Video Filter box is checked. Now, whenever this box is checked, the system is going to extract images from your file and put them in the directory that you've designated. So if you don't want that to happen, you come, have to come back into this and uncheck that. So I'm going to save that. One of the other little tricky parts of this. So now, you get to the correct point in the program, and I've gone ahead to 12 minutes, 38 seconds, and I'm going to record about five seconds of video here by just pressing the play button. There's one, two, three, four, five, stop. Now, if I go back and check my file, I should have, I've still got, this thing is still going. Yep, 
you have to be a little bit careful with it because you can end up with a whole lot more files than you want. Okay, I have left myself now with 100 images. And the next thing I'm going to do is go to the Deep Sky Stacker, which is another free program that you can download. It's an open source program. And it's called Deep Sky Stacker. And in Deep Sky Stacker, what you do first is you designate a, a, a folder that has the images that you want to stack in it. And that's what I've done right here. When you do that, you then tell the system that you have these images and that you want to process them. So Deep Sky Stacker will go ahead and process your images as it has it's almost done. Okay, there's a hundred, and now we can say stack. And it'll go through the stacking process. Basically what it's doing is it's aligning all these images in a, according to the stars that appear on them, and then it's simply adding them together. Let it run here for another minute or so. Okay, Deep Sky Stacker has finished. And as you can see here, it's stacked 100 of my images. And there's a, an output here. There's, it's going to output the stacked image, which is right here. And... Um, it outputs the last image that it did, which is the other stacked image that I did earlier. And then it has a series of graphs here that shows you that its calculations. This is the list of files that it used in the stack. And there are a hundred of these here. It gives you a log. And finally, there's the settings page. But if we go back to our stacked image, we can see that this is our area of interest. And we can zoom in on that because this is a pretty good image at this point. You can see the stars on there. Okay, here I've overlain the stacked image, which is here. I've zoomed it in um, considerably because this image has more detail. You can zoom in on it uh, relatively closely. And then I overlaid it on top of Stellarium, a planetarium program, so that you can see over here the same stars that appear in the stack. For example, this star right here is al Qadir, and it's, it's this star on the overlay. And then you can see these other stars too. So this string of stars is that group in Draconis, and our object is right about in here. And the interesting thing about this is you can identify each star that's in this stack and compare it against its um, actual stars shown in the planetarium program. And they all appear there. That tells us that every object that is appearing in this stacked photograph is actually part of the mapped star background. And that tells us that the object, which we know is right in this area, is not visible even in this stacked image consisting of 300 frames. Some of those frames being the images in which the object flashed. Now, speaking of that flash, if we look right here, you will see that there is a smudge of color in that area. And that would be right here in Stellarium. And in, as you can see in Stellarium, there's absolutely nothing there at all. And that, I believe, is a ghost image that was produced in the stack by the few frames that do have the object uh, sending forth that burst of light, whether it be red light or 
white light. I think this confirms the original supposition that I had made is that this object is truly not visible. And it's not visible in visible light, and it's also not visible in the near infrared light that this camera is sensitive to. Because if it was, I think we'd pick something up in this stacked image, and we don't, other than that ghostly image of the few times that it did flash. So sometimes you get good information from data that actually has no information in it, which is the case here.